This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon and welcome to Asian Review. I'm your host, Lily Ong. The history of sister cities goes back to post-World War II when they were started as financial aid programs to countries in Western Europe. Today we're going to talk about the sister cities relations of Honolulu with Mr. Ed Hawkins. He's the executive director in the mayor's office of economic development. Welcome to the show, Mr. Hawkins. Thank you, Lily. Now, Mr. Hawkins, how many sister cities do we have in Honolulu? Honolulu right now has 33 sister cities, which seems uh, daunting. <laughs> it's, a, it's a large number. Uh, all but 10 are in the Asia-Pacific region, and they trace their roots to primarily cultural relationships, mostly where immigrants came uh, to Hawaii. So we have many that are in Japan, China, and the Philippines, uh, but we have other countries as well because of history or maybe other reasons, business, economic, those things as well. Mm -hmm. And how does Honolulu go about selecting its sister cities or rather accepting you know, any outside propositions that come in? Usually it's a step-by-step -step process. Uh, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, there first has to be interest either from one side or the other. Uh, there needs to be some sort of a commitment to do this. And there needs to be some uh, relationships. Uh, the city council, the Honolulu City Council, approves these sister city relationships. And there are, there are some guidelines. Uh, for example, uh, cities should be of equivalent size. It doesn't have to be equal, but equivalent. Uh, they have to share some sort of a relationship, like cultural, historical, and then uh, some some way to help the people of Hawaii uh, benefit from that relationship. So uh, when those things uh, uh, are uh, line up, then the city council uh, will take take that up, pass a resolution, and then it's sent over to the executive, which is the mayor, and the mayor will decide to sign it and uh, start the process. So from the pass, passing of the resolution to the mayor signing, there is a, a time lapse? There can be. It could be, uh, I would say, concurrent, but uh, certainly it could be short. It could be long based on some of the research that might need to be done in order to see what all the benefits are. Okay. I've actually seen um, some of the time lapse going up as long as 10 to 19 years. So what happened in that 10 to 19 years for those cities? You know, the resolution was passed and it was another 10, 19 years before it was signed. What happened during that period of time? Uh, I, I think what happens is basically trying to figure out what the benefits of that relationship would be. Uh, each administration uh, treats them differently. Um, there may be some interest in, in some cities and in, in city relationships. There may be other programs or issues that might come up for the administration. So you'd have to go back to the past administrations to see uh -huh. uh, how that developed. But uh, for this current administration, uh, we're looking at, in fact, there are cities that uh, have come to us for possible future relationships. So it's a process of taking a look at it and assessing all those requirements and stipulations that are stated in the, mm -hmm. in the charter. Now you mentioned all the criteria, one being it has to be comparable size and there has to be reciprocal economic or cultural benefits. Uh, do they have to fulfill every single one of re these requirements or just a part of it? No, it's, it's not uh, uh, all and. It's, it's uh, uh, one or several. And, and usually what happens is there are, there are usually several reasons why. And, and sometimes the, the population sometimes uh, is, is interesting to work because uh, in many of the Asian countries that are coastal countries that, that have heavy populated areas, uh, there are millions of people. And uh, certainly uh, Honolulu being less than a million people, um, if, if you use that as the only criteria, it'd be very difficult to do. So we look at other areas as well, historical ties, definitely in business, potential mm -hmm. business ties. Talking about historical ties, I know we have a sister city, a sister city in France. Would you mind sharing with us the historical significance between the two cities? Sure, that's that's one of the very first sister cities that was established, and, and it traces its roots back to the Nikkei soldiers, the Japanese American soldiers who volunteered and, and fought in World War II, and they were instrumental in uh, liberating the city of Brie and Bifontaine. Uh, in fact, there is a, a group called the uh, Peace and Freedom Trail. Uh, 
a foundation, that association and Briere that keeps up the relationship and the sons and daughters of the 442nd, the 100th, uh, uh, keep, keep that relationship alive. So from that uh, relationship developed the sister city relationship, which is still ongoing. And uh, at significant uh, points, uh, such as 10-year anniversary or 15-year anniversary, delegations either come here to Honolulu or a, a delegation from Honolulu goes to Brie to keep that relationship uh, active and alive. Mm -hmm. And besides this, um, you know, visits of courtesy, are there any activities exchanged, um, exchanges that take place between the two cities? There are. Um, there, it, it runs the gamut from cultural, cultural performances, uh, to educational. Uh, sister schools uh, in, in the public schools, for example, um, elementary, um, middle school, and high school levels. And if there are business opportunities as well, uh, we, we encourage the Chambers of Commerce from both uh, Honolulu and, and, and our sister city to promote that relationship and possibly help uh, investors and entrepreneurs from both of the cities and promoting their, their businesses. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be with this city in France, but could you list more, maybe more specific examples? For example, you mentioned cultural festivals. Mm -hmm. Have we um, actually launched any cultural festival abroad? And, and the, uh, it, it's interesting that uh, a lot of people love to come to Honolulu, so, so we really don't, don't have to work too hard to uh, invite uh, other sister cities to come here. Uh, you're, you're probably familiar with uh, the Honolulu Festival in March, the uh, Pan Pacific Festival in, in, in June, and various other events throughout the year, uh, the Honolulu Marathon, which is coming up in December. So these events are already there in place, and many of our sister cities come to participate in, in those, and they will bring uh, many, many people, groups of people, performers, and they love to come here. Uh, the other cultural reach to the other side is not as extensive. But uh, we do work with local nonprofit organizations, and especially the Chambers of Commerce, to send delegations. Uh, the Junior Chamber of Commerce, the Japanese Junior Chamber, uh, sends their uh, uh, cherry blossom queen and the court uh, to promote relationships in, in China and, and other places. So, so we, we do uh, uh, follow up on those. Have we done any um, hula competitions abroad or performances abroad that there, you know? we, uh, For those kinds of things, we, we try to uh, uh, tap into the already established relationships and, and opportunities like Hawaii Tourism Authority might do a, a uh, tourism fair in uh, either Japan or other places. And uh, we would work closely with them and, and organizations locally to send hula troops or uh, uh, chants or dances or, or performances or singers. Mm -hmm. And being that uh, we are one of the sister cities in, in Japan especially, I think we have about four sister cities in Japan, um, will we accord any special privileges at this kind of international events? Well, we have five. We have five sister cities uh, with, with, with Japan, the oldest being Hiroshima, uh, 1959. It was the first one that was established. Uh, and uh, the, the reason for that is, of course, the uh, the war, uh, the the beginning and the end, if you will, the Pearl Harbor here and dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, and that that has been very very strong. So there there's uh, when if you say uh, special things accorded, uh, we always e each of the cities uh, has events throughout the year. Uh, for example. We just had an event this past weekend in Hiroshima called Honolulu Day. So, oh. so they, they uh, honor that relationship. And, and what we do is we try to support it. Uh, we prepared a message from, from the mayor, a video message, and we sent it to them so that they could uh, show it to their people. And uh, that, those kinds of things uh, continue to promote the relationship that we have. Was there any promotion done locally regarding Honolulu Day? Because I'm, I'm hearing it for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because uh, it was, uh, it's, it's held in, in Hiroshima, mm -hmm. and it's really for the citizens there. So uh, especially in Japan, there's probably more halals, hula halals, oh. than in, in Hawaii, all of Hawaii. So mm -hmm. they love hula, and so um, uh, they, they will bring hula troops uh, to participate. They will have parades and so forth. So it's it's really locally for Hiroshima. But what they uh, would would like is support from the people of Honolulu to recognize that they are doing this 
And that's why messages from the mayor or messages from the Chamber of Commerce, um, there was a delegation of the junior chamber that is going to stop by there to uh, promote the relationship with their uh, junior chamber. So th those kinds of things uh, mm -hmm. help that relationship. Yeah. And given the strong ties between um, Honolulu and, and Japan, I imagine you received quite a few propositions from Japanese sisters, uh, cities that are interested in becoming sister cities of Honolulu. Um, obviously, you cannot take on every one of them. How do you say no to those that you have to say no to? Well, we don't really say no. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we tell them that uh, we are interested, and, 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 that, and that's true. That's, that's not fibbing. Uh, we are interested. Uh, there is a limit, though. There is a limit that's been established by the city council. Uh, so you can't have infinite number. Uh, so we take a look at them very seriously. And uh, we have been approached by several other uh, cities, uh, Edogawa uh, Ku, which is a special part of Tokyo, and uh, uh, there's another town called Usa, uh, USA. <laughs> it's, okay. that's, that, I think that's part of the reason that they're trying to promote it uh, in, in Kyushu. So, mm -hmm. so we do get some uh, interest, and what we have to do is, again, go back to the city council resolution and uh, make sure that, that we meet all those requirements. And also that we're not overloading ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, we have 33 mm -hmm. around the world, not just in Asia Pacific, but mm -hmm. around the world. So we have to assess them very, very carefully. And then ultimately, it's going to take the signature of the mayor to uh, uh, promote this, uh, to finalize a sister city relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, in the event that the resolution was passed, but no, you know, the, 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 no signature of the mayor was obtained, what happened to that relationship? Does it just well, dissolve automatically? Uh, no, it doesn't uh, dissolve. There, there's a stipulation that, that at anniversary uh, events, five, ten year events, that each side should have uh, at least a exchange of visits or ex uh, a visit and an exchange of gifts. Uh, so it, it does say that, and uh, we, it, usually in those relationships that, that have been uh, uh, kept is that there has been that event, maybe every five years or every ten years, but other kinds of uh, uh, relationships have, have not developed to the, to the extent. Some are very, very strong, as mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Nagaoka City, uh, mm -hmm. uh, they bring their beautiful fireworks uh, to the Honolulu Festival. So. Some are very, very strong, and then the others are not as strong, but that doesn't mean that uh, the other relationships are useless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even if, the, what if there were no exchange of visits, mm -hmm. uh, say a sister city has been, you know, a uh, uh, city has been a city of Honolulu for 10, 20 years, and there's been no exchange of visits, what happened to those relationships? Uh, then, then it's a process of taking a look, and it'll mm -hmm. be my office. Uh, we're responsible for the sister city, so we'll assess. But why, why it came to that point, uh, does it still meet the criteria, uh, is there interest? So we would reach out to uh, hopefully uh, those who have either proposed it or nurtured it and also to the sister city in question and ask uh, if they're interested in continuing the relationship. And, and if there's no interest, then we would recommend that those be dropped from the uh, list. Mm -hmm. And how is the dropping process, which you have to? Uh, I haven't done one yet, but <laughs> I, I would as assume that we would uh, start with a letter uh, mm. from the mayor saying that uh, we haven't done this for such time that uh, we feel, unless uh, you agree to, uh, otherwise or, or you think otherwise, that uh, it's time to terminate. I think it's, it's proper to, to inform our sister cities that any action like that mm -hmm. will be Absolutely, right. and get their agreement. Sure. To, yeah, so plenty um, exchanges and activities right. between Japanese cities and Honolulu. Mm -hmm. What about the Chinese cities? I think we have about, um, is it yes. five or six? We have six in, in China, and uh, some are strong, just like in, in Japan. Some are, some are very strong, some are not as strong. Uh, the strongest one seems to be with the city of Zhongshan, mm -hmm. and uh, Zhongshan is uh, near Hong Kong. And uh, it's the home of Dr. Sun Yat Sen. Mm -hmm. So, the, uh, and, and many of the immigrants from China came from that region. So, that's the historical and cultural tie. Um, there are organizations here in Hawaii, Sun Yat Sen uh, uh, organizations, that continue to promote that relationship. In fact, uh, this month, 
that group is going to Zhongshan, oh. uh, and uh, they've uh, promoted an educational program with a school in, in Hawaii Kai and uh, with uh, Zhongshan. So they're con they're continuing to promote that relationship, and and we we support in the sense that we would send messages from the mayor uh, and so forth, and uh, we are looking at. Uh, uh, sending a delegation from the city this year uh, and uh, later this month we're looking at to continue uh, promoting this relationship because earlier this year in uh, August a delegation from Zhongshan visited Honolulu and uh, we did a number of things we had dinners and uh, a tree planting ceremony on the civic grounds so uh, this time uh, in the return visit they're proposing that we do a tree planting. So these kinds of activities continue to keep that relationship fresh and alive. So the group that came from Chongshan, was it just a, a representation of government officials or were there any students? It was, uh, it was a vice, vice mayor, a delegation led by the vice mayor of the city and some government officials. But uh, there were no students at that time. But there were other students that came for other activities. And again, uh, the Zhongshan uh, support group that took them to the, the schools in, in Hawaii Kai and engaged in activities. Yeah. There. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Hawkins. We're going to take a little short break here. When we come back, we're going to continue our discussion into the sister city's relations of Hawaii. Honolulu, thank you. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, I'm Prince Dykes, the volunteer host of the Prince of Investing. Think Tech is important to me because it brings Hawaii's number one financial literacy show around the globe. For the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech. We'll run only during the month of November and you can help. Please donate what you can so that Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness to promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send your tax deductible contribution by going to the website thinksforthinktech.causevox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by Think Tech Hawaii, 30 plus weekly shows, thank you, mahalo for your generosity. Welcome back to the show. This is Asian Review. I'm your host, Lola Ong. We have with us today Mr. Ed Hawkins. He's Executive Director from the Mayor's Office of Economic Development. And today we're discussing the sister cities of Honolulu. So continuing on with our conversation, you mentioned um, Zhongshan. Are there any other Chinese cities that, um, you know, could you give us examples of the exchange activities with Honolulu? Uh, the other ones, uh, it's, it's Hainan, Hainan Island, um, and uh, also um, uh, Shanghai, uh, Fangshan District, um, and uh, and that's a new sister city, right? That's that's a new sister city, and uh, uh, Qingwandao is is another one, and uh, if if uh, and and several others, um, but uh, the the strongest one is Zhongshan, but after that, uh, Chengdu is also mm -hmm. a, a sister city. Uh, Chengdu might be the the, the next. And uh, part of the reason is that there is a delegation uh, from here that goes there every year uh, with the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the ladies from the, um, which, which, which program is that? It's the um, Narcissus, Narcissus Court, yes. right? Yeah. And uh, uh, they travel through some of the cities and, and they uh, stop in Chengdu. And so that relationship has been going for, for some time. Mm -hmm. uh, we hosted a group from uh, Shanghai Fanshan District uh, earlier this year, and they are very, very interested in getting into uh, business and economic relationships, and uh, yet to be determined. We don't know exactly, but uh, uh, Fanshan District happens to be a center for uh, cosmetics. Ah. And so uh, that was one of the discussion topics that we had at the time. Uh, and uh, this particular, uh, I, I mentioned that uh, there will be a delegation going from here to uh, uh, 
Zhongshan for the 20th anniversary. This is the 20th anniversary of our relationship. So uh, we were hoping to stop by Shanghai, but uh, it seems like uh, this time we'll not be able to. But we're going to continue that discussions with them to see if we can get into the economic sector as well. So do these uh, private uh, groups that go to, uh, to our sister cities, do they travel separately from our governmental groups? Are there any, you know, collaboration in these mission trips? They have traveled with uh, city and state officials uh, and also University of Hawaii because there's a healthy educational relationships as well. Uh, so they've done that. And if there's time to coordinate that, uh, we will certainly do that. But, but the other aspect of uh, travel, international travel, is the budget. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so uh, we can't be uh, too profligate with, with, uh, with the city funds. So we, we try to uh, time it in, in, in very significant years, like this 20th anniversary. Uh, we want to be, uh, we wanna be very uh, uh, responsible for spending, spending uh, funds, as you can imagine. Uh, and if we collaborate with these private groups or uh, nonprofit groups that are going, then that makes the uh, visit uh, much easier to do, and that's what we try to look at. Mm -hmm. Is the city allowed to take on sponsorship? Suppose our sister cities wanted to sponsor a delegation over, are we allowed to take on those kind of sponsorship? Um, what, what do you mean by take on this? As in, if they, because we're limited in our funds, mm -hmm. so if they, you know, came up with the proposition that we're going to sponsor a group from your government to visit our government, are we allowed to accept that? Oh, I see. Uh, yes, and, and and many times that happens. Uh, uh, for example, in uh, Kaohsiung, which is uh, Taiwan, is our, is our sister sister city, and uh, they would host a international event, maybe a. Uh, uh, city development or a greening of the city event and they would extend an invitation to mayors of their sister cities including Honolulu so uh, we would receive the invitation uh, to the mayor and uh, they would uh, offer to host they would uh, offer to uh, pay for that particular trip so we would work with them and we would work with the mayor's office and see if that's possible and if the mayor cannot go then we would recommend perhaps a uh, representative to go. Mm -hmm. So yes, we, we can. Uh, we would have to report that to the city council mm -hmm. and, and make sure that uh, uh, all the uh, approvals are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who does the mayor typically take along with when he goes on this uh, trade missions? On, on trade missions, usually it, it's based on the topic of that particular uh, conference, if there's a conference. Mm -hmm. uh, for trade missions, he would work with uh, the local business community, sometimes uh, business people have relationships already, already established relationships, uh, and, and they would be part of the delegation. So it would be a collaboration between the city and the local, for the trade missions, it would be the local business community and business leaders that have already established relationships. Mm -hmm. Well, you give us some wonderful examples as far as mm -hmm. cultural and educational exchanges. In terms of business and trade, because I'm a numbers person, mm -hmm. um, could you provide any numbers, um, you know, economic numbers that have transpired from the sister cities' relations? Well, economic numbers, uh, I, I, I don't think I can give you a dollar amount, mm -hmm. but uh, there are some significant things. Uh, for example, uh, tourism is, is, is a big uh, draw. For, for Hawaii. So uh, as we uh, travel to these sister cities and talk about programs and collaborating on events, uh, one I, may, I might mention which is coming up is a uh, possible exchange between a uh, Hawaii Bicycle League and uh, uh, one of our uh, sister uh, locations in, in Ehime Prefecture that has a bi bicycling event. So we're looking at the, in the future trading uh, or exchanging teams that go, uh, our teams w would go there, and then maybe in alternate years, their teams would come here. So it promotes tourism and uh, sports tourism. Mm -hmm. so, so that's one of the things that uh, hasn't resulted yet. It's one of those things that we'll work on. Uh, the, the others would be like the film industry. Mm -hmm. The Honolulu Film Office is in our uh, office as well. And uh, we, uh, we, we have, uh, many uh, films and, and movies and, and TV programs, as you know, uh, that come here. 
and uh, we're looking at uh, reaching out to other countries as well to see if we can draw their film industry here to, to uh, uh, film and, and to locate. And, and uh, that would be uh, uh, great for economics for uh, not just for the uh, leisure industry, but for the workforce as well. Mm -hmm. So beyond trade and cultural, you know, economic and educational, what about exchanges of technological know-how in municipal um, services such as mm -hmm. sanitation, waterworks, infrastructure? Has there been any exchange of those kind of solutions? Yes, we have. Um, uh, and, and again, uh, what uh, we, we have in our city office, we just established the uh, Office of Resi Resiliency. And uh, this, this office uh, takes care of looking at the effects of uh, rise in the sea level, uh, global warming, and uh, recycling, and uh, green energy, and all these things to uh, make Hawaii uh, much more self-sufficient and green. And, and we've reached out to our sister cities that are interested in the same things. Uh, we, we hosted groups from Korea. We've hosted groups from Japan and China. Uh, we've showed them the H-Power, uh, which is the, our recycling, the city recycling system located in the Campbell Industrial Park. Uh, and then we talked about sea level rises and, and all the erosions that's happening. And they're going through similar problems as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have gotten emergency people and uh, climate change people together to discuss solutions because knowledge is also, exchange of knowledge is also important in mm -hmm. these sister city relationships. Mm -hmm. Now I know San Juan and Puerto Rico is one of sister cities, so you know when Hurricane Irma, mm -hmm. you know, went through it just about wrecked the whole island. Did we provide any humanitarian efforts to our sister cities? The, uh, from the city itself to the city, uh, I'm not aware that we have. There, there were some volunteer groups. Uh, the Red Cross certainly did, Hawaii Red Cross, and donations were encouraged to the Red Cross. So any support was done through that mechanism. Okay. I just want to take a moment to quickly share the web page of the um, mm -hmm. Office of Economic Development so that our viewers know to go there to look at the full list of sister cities. Um, let's take a look. So these are all of our 33 sister cities. Mm -hmm. Most of them in, I would say, in Japan, China, and Philippines. All but 10 are in the Asia Pacific region. Yeah. Right? So I think, you know, it, it's no coincidence that, you know, these, um, our largest ethnic populations are Japanese, Chinese, and Philippines. Filipinos. Right. So I can see, I, I think the mm -hmm. local population provide a very strong movement in the citizens movement. That's Am I correct? correct? Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, so. And we still, and, and we get some more ideas too. There are some. Uh, uh, from the Philippines, for example, uh, the two major areas of the uh, immigrants are from Ilocos, which is in the northern part of uh, uh, the Luzon, mm -hmm. and then uh, also from the Visayan region, which is Cebu in that area. And uh, there, there's been recent proposals from some of the other areas that uh, would like to see sister city relationships. Mm -hmm. And I know that sometimes when Mayor go and visit them, um, he's presented with a symbolic key to the yes. city. What is a symbolic key? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the key to the city usually is given to uh, either uh, visitors or locals that uh, a city is very proud of. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, cities will present them to dignitaries or Nobel Prize winners or sports stars or people like that. Uh, the most recent, I think, in Honolulu that was given was to the uh, 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 the uh, uh, Hoko, uh, Hokulea oh. when when they returned to Honolulu from their uh, several year mm -hmm. around the world voyage and cruise. So those are the events that uh, the and, and it's up to the mayor to to select. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Well, coming to the end of the show, just very quickly, if you could, um, you know, let us know what's in the future of um, Honolulu Sister Cities program. What are some of the things that we can expect to come out of the program? I think uh, we went through the list of the, the 33 and, and others that are being asked to be part of the Sister City Network. And uh, for, for me, the, the important thing is, first of all, catalog them to make sure we know which ones are active, what's been active, 
Uh, we talked earlier about some that have not been active for a long time. So we need to catalog. And then the second thing we need to do is we need to prioritize. You know, what's important? What, what would be the best for the people of Honolulu? Uh, not just to uh, have a sister city relationship or have culture relationship, but let's take a real good look at what benefits we can gain from that. And then the, uh, the third thing that I'd like to do is to go ahead and act on them, come up with programs, uh, hard programs. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I like to talk to my staff about is that um, uh, we talk about infrastructure, right? Uh, hard infrastructure like roads and sewers and things like that. Those are important, but there's also soft infrastructure, which is education, uh, social services, and things like that. And as we mentioned, knowledge uh, from other sister cities could be very useful. So uh, coming up with programs and uh, after we prioritize them and putting our effort and energy uh, into those, mm -hmm. I think that's the future. It sounds like you got a city. really solid plan in, in <laughs> place. That's wonderful. Well, I agree with, as, you know, with the technologies and modern communication methods, uh -huh. the world is becoming smaller and global relations are becoming more complex and all the more vital and irreplaceable is the personal relationship and face-to-face -face meetings that transpire from the sister cities' relations. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Hawkins, for being on our show today. And um, we look forward to chatting thank more you, and Lily. having you on the show Appreciate again it. in the future. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much. Today. Thank you.